Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and it looks like we have some kind of pre preliminary ideas or lists of what the tanks and planes might be for Operation Summer. Now if you don't know what Operation Summer is, it is the yearly, not really competition, but event where you're able to get some special vehicles in War Thunder. Now, Mike10D, who is a guy who does these uh, unofficial patch notes on the War Thunder Reddit, has been digging through the game files on the dev server and found out what those vehicles probably are. Also, some other interesting information that we might talk about in this video. So, if you want a link to it, well, there'll be two links in the description. There'll be one to the War Thunder Reddit post and also the Google Doc, which has all of the information in it already. So Operation Summer uh, was thought to be coming out on the 28th or around that point, that's the last I heard, and that was a few months ago. And it seems like that's probably going to be the case. Uh, a lot of this stuff might be uh, published tomorrow or it might be published very soon. We've had quite a lull on the War Thunder website. So maybe they're coming out all guns blazing in the next few days showing all of this stuff. So anyway, uh, let's get into it. What are the tanks that are probably, remember, this is all subject to change. This is just like the dev server. Uh, so yeah, uh, just just remember that. Um, so the tanks um, that we're seeing, or it looks like it's going to be, are the SDKFC 2344 and the Type 65AA. Now the SDKFC 2344 is the Puma, or at least the Puma chassis, which is open topped and has the long bowed 75 on it. So it doesn't have a lot of uh, traverse available to it, but it does have that long bowed 75. Now, when the Puma came into game, or uh, whenever I talked about armored cars in the past, I was pretty sure this thing was going to make it in. I'm kind of surprised that um, it's going to be a special event vehicle. Maybe they didn't deem it worthy enough to be in the normal tree. Uh, I'm not really sure why, unless they're going to do like a short-barreled, uh, you know, puma in the tree. It seems kind of odd having this as an Operation Summer vehicle. I would definitely put it in the normal tree instead of having it as a gift. Um, also, one thing that we saw in some of the last, um, the last, what, what's the word? The last events that Gaijin have run for these uh, gift vehicles is that all of them have been premium, so hopefully we see that trend as well in Operation Summer. So yeah, the SDKFC 2344 should be pretty good. Um, the only issue with open top tank destroyers or open topped armored cars, whatever you want to call it, is the fact that, well, they're open to uh, uh, aircraft, aren't they? And they will target you <laughs> because... Uh, they'll see you on the map in arcade and in realistic. It, with the long barreled 75, it'll probably have a very similar BR to the Marder. Uh, it may have a very similar BR to the first Marder that you see, because the first Marder doesn't have a lot of uh, traverse, it doesn't have a lot of armor, and that's basically what you're seeing with the SD KFC 2344. There'll obviously be some inter interesting stuff that we won't really know about, such as. Uh, the reload rate on the thing, and uh, maybe that'll change where its BR is, but when it comes to speed, when it comes to how the chassis performs, we already know all that stuff from the Puma itself. So we know that it's going to be 50 cal to death, uh, we know that it's going to be quite nippy, and we know uh, that the fact that on heavy terrain such as uh, heavy mud or sand it's going to struggle. So this is probably going to be an ambush tank in realistic, and that's really about it. But still a nice tank to have, definitely an iconic one, which was present in a lot of the war. The Type 65 AA is an interesting vehicle. I didn't think uh, this would ever make it into game. And because, well, first of all, it's not really called the Type 65. I think uh, the name might be changed Hello Bernard. <laughs> the name might be changed uh, when it actually gets, uh, when we talk about the Operation Summer, to the Type 63. The Type 65, if we have a look at it, is a twin 37mm twinned 
uh, towed uh, anti-aircraft artillery piece, so AAA, uh, basically AA. And with the twin 37 millimeters, obviously, it's quite deadly. It was used by the Chinese army, or the and uh, actually made by the Chinese or the China North Industries Group uh, cooperation. But when we look at the Type 63, which is the self-propelled anti-aircraft gun system, this was a T-34 chassis, which uh, had kind of a square or a box on top of it, and then the two 37 millimeters popping out. Now the T-34 chassis is either one of the very old ones, or it's just been, a lot of the armor's been taken out. Uh, from what I can find, the glacis plate was 45 to 47 millimeters at 60 degrees, so that's still, you know, pretty steep at least. Um, the whole sides 45 to 47 at uh, 40 degrees, and the whole rear 47. So it's definitely a T-34 uh, chassis, or with the fact that, you know, all the way around it's a uh, very similar armor. The turret itself though sits at 15 millimeters all the way around so you will be able to pen it with a lot of machine guns and well it's gonna have two rapid firing 37 millimeters on it the type 63 guns. Will this thing be any good? Um, I, uh, I don't know I really doubt it. It goes at 50 kilometers an hour it'll probably sit in the Russian premium tree. We already have a few uh, <laughs> Russian premium uh, anti-aircraft stuff such as the Zut 37 which is probably one of the worst uh, anti-aircraft guns in game but then again the AA guns for the Russians are actually not terrible tank destroyers uh, especially when you get like their uh, AP rounds so maybe this thing will be quite a fun tank destroyer very much similar to maybe a ZSU 57 just a, a lighter version of it but it really depends on its BR if this thing gets stuck with something around 5.0 well, it's pretty much crucified uh, before it goes out. The reason for that is it won't be able to penetrate Tigers. We're still talking about a 37mm here. What it might do, though, around something like 4.0 or 3.0, is it might do decent work, uh, to be honest. It might be able to pen a lot of German vehicles. Uh, it will probably be able to pen some British ones. Still might struggle with Americans, though. Shermans still exist, so yeah. Hopefully they don't put it too low. I really doubt they will. Um, it seems like both these vehicles, though, I can't see any of them being around uh, the middle fives or the middle sixes. Last time we got the Type 60... I can't remember exactly what it was. Unfortunately, I'm at work right now. Uh, but the it might have been the Type 62. Basically the light tank, right? The light T-54. Um, which was a brilliant vehicle to have, to be quite honest. I thought it was a really nice vehicle. Then we got the Grant, um, which was also awesome. And we also got the Excelsior, which even though was not that high in BR, uh, was a very iconic tank to have, just because it was a hev another heavy tank for the British, which was uh, designed to be a replacement for the Churchill. So maybe that's what they're trying to go for with this one again. Uh, the idea of not really giving really good tanks, but giving iconic ones, and I'm completely fine with that when we come from a, a point of view of... when we come from a point of view of... Uh, like, trying not to sell power, and basically just having stuff which is uh, interesting in the game. The planes are interesting as well. One of them is an unknown, but we can speculate, because there aren't many, uh, many options. And uh, the other one is the P-43A1, so the initial version of the P-43 Lancer. Now, I thought the P-43 Lancer was going to be in-game a long time ago, just like a lot more variants of the P-40. But they have said that they will uh, add in more variants of the P-40. And the P-43 Lancer, I thought, was, you know, just going to come in straight after. If you don't know what this thing is, it actually kind of looks like a Wildcat. It does perform a lot better than a Wildcat. It's a single-engined, all-metal, low-wing uh, monoplane fighter. Uh, it was actually built by the Republic Aviation Company uh, in World War II. Introduced in 1941 and retired in 1944. It was one of these American aircraft which was never really used by the Americans. Uh, another advantage, another 
example of this would be the Ara Cobra and the King Cobra, mainly used by the Russians, and uh, the P-40s, which were generally used by uh, people like China, or uh, just in different countries such as China and still used by Americans. Uh, what is interesting about this machine, the P-43, is that it has 450 cals on it, so, you know, decent, uh, decent armament. And when we look at stuff <clears throat> like its maximum speed, it could still go nearly 600 kilometers an hour, even with its beefy structure. Now, even though it was fast, it was uh, well armed, one of the issues with a lot of American aircraft, which were made around 1941, even though they were, you know, combat effective, was, what, was that they had to compete with some absolute monsters. I mean, think about the P-38, right? The P-38 was an absolute monster for its time. This thing was introduced in 1941, the same year as the Lancer, and it just blew it out of the water. So unfortunately for the Lancer, it kind of just got left behind, very much like stuff like the P-40. And then when the P-51s and uh, definitely the P-57s got added in, well, yeah, <laughs> there wasn't a lot to the P-43. Uh, but... Uh, I'll read you out its operational history, just to give you an idea of uh, its the fate that it had, which wasn't a very pretty one. The Lend-Lease aircraft were delivered to China through Claire Cheno's American Volunteer Group, the Flying Tigers. Pilots involved in the ferrying flights commended the P-43 for its good high-altitude performance compared to the Curtis P-40. Good roll rate and a radial engine without a vulnerable liquid cooling system. Apparently, several AVG pilots asked uh, Sheno to keep some P-43s, but the request was denied due to the aircraft's lack of armor or self-sealing fuel tanks. In addition, the turbo supercharger proved unreliable and the wet wing fuel tanks leaked constantly. In June 1942, Robert L. Scott Jr., a USAAF pilot supporting the AVG, photographed the peaks of Mount Everest from 44,000 or 13,000 meters, attesting to the strengths of this aircraft. The P-43 performed poorly in combat in the hands of the Chinese Air Force against Japan, uh, Japan due to its great vulnerability. It was replaced by other aircraft in early 1944. Rudimentary protection added to the P-43A1 was insufficient. In addition, the P-43's R-1830 engines were in high demand for the Douglas C-47 transports, effectively grounding the surviving aircraft. <coughs> the USAAC considered the P-43 and its variants obsolete from the start and used them only for training purposes. In fall 1942, all surviving USAAF transitioned from USAAC in June 1941. P-43s were redesignated to RP-43. In indicating they were unfit for combat. Most of the aircraft that were not sent to China were modified uh, were modified for photo reconnaissance duties and used for training. AP-43s were loaned to the Royal Australian Air Force in 1942 and served with number one photo reconnaissance units based in uh, Kumeli Airfield, 60 miles south of Darwin and the Northern Territory. The RAAF flew many long-range, high-altitude photo reconnaissance missions before the six survivors were returned to the USAAF in 1943. So yeah, uh, basically, it was a aircraft which was done out by the times. If it had maybe come out a few years earlier, then it would have been a very, very good aircraft. But unfortunately, it had to deal with some of the powerhouses of the American Army. Sorry, I have a bit of a cold. So, um, one of the things I'm looking forward to, which we we'll probably won't see from the P-43, is the fact that it may get some interesting skins. One of my favorite skins in game is the Spitfire Mark IX, because it has this blue skin on the photo reconnaissance side of it, because it was used for photo reconnaissance. And I hope that this thing kind of has a similar skin, uh, just so I can grind it out. But overall, there probably isn't really a reason to... Uh, fly this thing. I mean, it might be a slightly better version of a uh, Wildcat, but I don't know anybody who really likes flying the Wildcat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it'll probably have a similar BR to the P-40, just because it has a uh, better high altitude performance, but that doesn't really mean a lot. It'll have a bit of armor on it, since it's the A-1 uh, version, and uh, hopefully, you know, it, it's a little bit of fun in game, but uh, you, you, we're not looking at a world beater here. <laughs> uh, maybe the P-43 
uh, normal will actually be put in the main tech tree. Now, the unknown aircraft is probably something with a 75mm gun. Now, that doesn't give us a lot to go on, and there aren't actually a lot of aircraft in the war which actually had 75mm guns. When I speculated on this last time, I was completely wrong, and, uh, you know, I'm completely fine with that, because that's what specula speculation is, it's an idea. <laughs> so, you know, don't crucify me if this is wrong. Uh, so, the two uh, machines that I've come up with, that it might be, uh, since, you know, we don't have them in-game and we have other 75s in-game, such as the PBJ and the uh, the Duck, it might be the JU-88P1. Now, the JU-88P1 is a JU-88 filled uh, with the same gun as the Duck. Uh, it has the 75mm cannon in a ventral gun pod, very similar mount uh, to the duck and that's basically it so maybe we see something like that and then the other one is the b25h or the barbie 3 uh, it had a sh <coughs> it had uh, it had 450 cows in the nose and then it also had a 75 kind of similar to the PBJ, but maybe we get some kind of uh, bomber version because obviously we have the PBJH, uh, which I believe is the one with the 75. Well, this is the B25H, uh, so we'll have to see if they. Uh, we'll have to see if they add those in. My, if I was going to uh, hazard a guess, I would say it's probably the JU88, uh, just because we don't have the you know the 75 on anything like a JU-88, but the B-25 is very similar to the PBJ, so, um, yeah, uh, kind of as simple as that. If we want to look at some other things, there is actually a few other stuff going on uh, when you look at this Google Doc. One of the interesting things is it actually has some update 1.71 tanks and planes in this. Now, I think at some point they're actually going to have an update where they don't have any tanks and planes and they're just going to work on stuff like World War Mode and ships. But for right now, it seems like they're still soldiering on. The SU-6 AM-42 is a, a plane which we kind of already have in game. Uh, the SU-6 is the uh, attacker which was added. It had the, um, it has the two twin 37 millimeters, and it's kind of surprising that we're going to get another model of it, just because, well, I th there was only three of them made. So if you add in another model, I don't know where you're getting this model from, unless it's uh, unless it's one of the um, variants. And the only real difference uh, between the variants is that, well, I don't really know. Uh, maybe this is one of the ones before it where it doesn't have the rear uh, cockpit with the uh, machine gun so basically this will just be uh, 237 millimeters without a rear turret but yeah that's really about it that's all I can think about so the Kai 109 is another massive Japanese attacker and uh, it's based on a Kai-67, which was actually introduced in the last update. So we have two aircraft, which are getting variants uh, from the last update, which is, you know, pretty cool. But this is another useless heavy fighter from the... <coughs> well, not useless, but you know what I mean. Um, it's a heavy fighter, which may actually be the uh, summertime... Uh, event machine as well. I mean, there, there might be a bit of crossover here, but um, it, because it has the one forward firing 75 millimeter in the nose, and it has one 12.7 millimeter. So this is just a derp, a derp um, machine. That's it. It doesn't have any excess guns on it. It doesn't have some 20s or maybe 30s somewhere. No, it just has one 75 and one 12 point and one 12.7. That's it. So that, to me, is another vehicle that you'll never see in-game. Uh, because we already don't see the majority of the Japanese tackle lines, and they're a hell of a lot better than that. The next one worries me uh, quite severely, and it is the Waffentrager Krupp Stair. So, or the Krupp Stair Waffentrager, whatever you want to call it. Now this is, um, a, a best you can call it, 
a prototype tank, okay? We're <laughs> it, it's as simple as that. We're not looking at something which was uh, really created in history. It was kind of made. It's uh, a feature of World of Tanks, basically. It's one of these open-topped uh, German tank destroyers, which looks very dodgy, is very dodgy, and I would put it on the same level as the E25, D50, and the E100. It's one of those weird ones. It was actually, you know, made in real life. There was some kind of prototype, but we don't know how it works. And it's uh, it's a glass cannon, if you really want to know about it. Uh, the eight, it has an 88mm KW K43 L71, so pretty much the same as the Tiger II. Uh, but if you actually look at its chassis, you wonder how the hell it actually supports such a gun. It's absolutely crazy. It's going to depend on how quick this thing is. It's going to depend on how fast its fire rate is. And is it a test of what we're going to see in the future? Because if we see more of these things, we're going to start getting just flat uh, Panzer III chassis with massive Tiger II 88s on them. And I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, but hopefully it's not a trend. And the last one is something which I'm not surprised is getting in-game, and I'm happy it is. It's the BTR 152A. Now, the BTR is uh, <laughs> an armored car, basically. It's a four-wheeled armored car, which uh, has an AA gun coming out of it. And I thought it would get in-game at some point. The A version has... Um, either a double ZPTU-2 or a quadruple ZPTU-4 KPVT 14.5mm anti-aircraft gun with 2400 rounds. So that's, you know, that that's the version that we're probably going to get, the 152A. And that's that's cool, you know? Um, the, B, the BTR 152A is something I've been looking forward to. Uh, it's another one of these armored cars, which is, you know, post-war, but it won't be very good at high levels, so we'll probably see it at low tiers. Uh, something that is interesting is now that opens the gate to a lot of other stuff. I really hope one day we see some of the early multi-turreted uh, lights or armored cars, whatever you want to call them, from the Russians. They're really cool. They're one of the really interesting uh, vehicles in uh, stuff like Men of War. Where they have, they're armed with 45s, they're armed with 37s and machine guns. Hopefully, one day we'll see them. Uh, but for now, I'm completely fine with having the BCR. Uh, also, there are some other changes which are kind of cool. You know, rockets that hit water now have the new FX. And also, we have um, that new end of battle screen, which I'm still trying to get used to. It seems like they love the minimalistic stuff, and that's completely fine. I understand it. It's kind of hipster, in my opinion, because I. <laughs> because <laughs> I want to see as much information as possible. But I understand that uh, that's only me, you know? But there's going to be a bunch of tank changes as well, like armor changes and uh, placement changes. So, you know, make sure you have a look so you can get used to them as they uh, will go on. Uh, just because even stuff like the Carnarvon has new stuff, and I'm very, very glad about that. Uh, apart from it actually is getting less turret armor, so that's great. <laughs> God, God damn it. But anyway, that's going to bring uh, this video to a close. Once again, I highly suggest you go and look at the unofficial patch notes. There will be a link in the description for us for you. And well, it looks like we're gonna get Operation Summer soon. Hopefully it's a lot of fun, we'll have to see. I'll see you next time.